Hey guys, how's it going? It's Baggins here and we're back finally with a new updated guide for Realm Royale featuring the latest patch, Open Beta 21. Now this video is actually made in collaboration with hi -Rez. They wanted uh, to reach out to me and explain to you guys the mysteries and the power and the awe that is the chicken combat mechanic which came into Realm Royale in the latest patch. So I'm gonna break down uh, the chicken combat. Some of you may be finding it pretty frustrating uh, when you down your opponent. Now your opponent can actually fight back but you also get the same option as well. So we're gonna go through the chicken combat but I thought rather than just do the chicken combat I'd also go through and update the rest of my guide as well. Uh, links in the description down below if you do want to support the channel you want to check out Realm Royale maybe you want to recommend it to a friend uh, whether you're new here or you've been here for a while or you just like clicking or tapping on links consider checking out the link in the description down below it'll help me out it helps high res out everybody's happy so the chicken combat this was a new mechanic that was added just for this patch and now when you get downed as a chicken you have two abilities available to you so you can peck somebody for 75 damage and then you can do that repeatedly as, as often as you want it's got like a 0 0.3 0 0.4 second animation so it's pretty fast you can do a lot of pecs uh, during the duration that you are chickened and then you also have a longer cooldown you can typically only use it once per chicken life like duration and that is the chicken charge now this is a pretty powerful ability it functions as a movement ability but also as a damage ability so you can go in any direction you can look up down left right diagonally and you can charge in that direction so I play on PC and a lot of this video will be geared towards the, the PC side of things but obviously you guys all know what the buttons are to press on the controller. I think it's probably left trigger and right trigger, I'd imagine. But with left click, you can pack people. Right click, you can use this chicken charge and it functions, like I say, as either a damage ability and that it deals 250 damage, or you can use it to quickly maneuver out of the way. Along with maneuverability, we also have the chickens being given the ability to double jump. So chickens can now jump not once, but twice in the air. So in the event that you get chicken now and you're nearby a building and you see a window up on the second floor, you can actually double jump twice and then chicken charge into the window and uh, quite a lot of your opponents won't be able to catch up with you unless they have their own movement ability available on cooldowns. They'll have to walk up through the building, up the stairs to come and catch you. And at that point, you can jump out the window and do a whole bunch of other shenanigans as a chicken. So a lot of cool options um, to outplay your opponent, but also obviously for your opponent to outplay you. Now, how can you get the best out of the chicken combat? Well, I thought rather than just describe it, I'd actually show you guys some live scenarios of me playing over the past week on this new patch where I've been able to use the chicken combat combat to outplay my opponents and uh, keep myself in the fight. So in this first example video here, we're just engaging onto a fight with an enemy player, but we're pretty low here and the actual chicken charge does connect with me and gets me pretty low. Now I realize at this point, they have used their chicken charge on me which is actually what hits me and puts me into the down state, downs me into a chicken farm in the first place. So at this point I realize, well, I'm a chicken and they're a chicken, but they don't have their chicken charge available and I do. So effectively I have a 250 damage ability that they don't have. We're both in a similar format. Also, I pretty much exclusively run incubation now, so my chicken comes up five seconds faster. So I then flip around and realize, well, now I can charge at them and start pecking them and take the fight to them. But uh, due to either this chicken running the chicken speed talent or just, you know, some masterful chicken plays, I'm not actually able to finish them off. And they do get up, but I get up at roughly the same time as well. Unfortunately, my weapons aren't reloaded. So rather than just chase that guy down who might have his weapons fully reloaded and available, instead I'm just gonna back off, reposition around the corner, use some uh, handy dandy smoke screen plays to mount up and ride through the smoke at an invisible form and put them back down into chicken form and then take the remaining fight to the other player as well. So yeah, being aware of chicken health and the cooldowns available to each one and also what talents you are running can play a big part in whether you're able to, you know, live or die as a chicken and whether your opponent gets to live or die. So in the second example here, we've got another video of me just jumping into a fight with a hunter in the early game here. We're only a couple minutes into the match. Through some uh, wiggling and some jukes and dodges and dives, I do manage to take the opponent down before they take me down. But I realize that that chicken does have their charge available. I'm only at 545 HP right now. So if we think about chicken charge dealing 250 damage and then the pack also deals another 75 damage, that's 325 damage that could be coming in. So I'm pretty low if we take that away from my health. 
I'm not gonna get by with much health remaining and my weapons are also very close to being empty So at this point I'm starting to pay like immediate respects to the chicken backing off Unfortunately the chicken charge does connect with me But I do manage to reload just in time one peck away from death But it's just having that sort of mindset now knowing that chickens can turn and down you like even at your 500 HP That is not necessarily safe if you got to reload a weapon that chicken can finish you off and this next video We have coming up is actually a perfect example of that coming into effect so again just about to initiate into a fight with an assassin here I hit it with the blast arrow we trade back and forth with the Ellie rifle and the crossbow now due to him dealing more damage on me just like not landing enough shots I do actually get chickened but because I'm aware that I've been doing such a massive amount of damage to him like I'm not specifically counting the numbers and I'm not saying that you should do the same but just being aware of like roughly the damage that you're putting out uh, pro tip if you go into the options and turn your damage numbers into combined it'll be much easier to track how much damage you're doing to the enemy but uh, we can see that we open up here we hit him with the blast arrow for uh, almost 300 damage and then we go in hit him with the longbow we're gonna assume that does about another 1,000 damage so that's 1,300 damage and then if we're just looking at the numbers we're hitting him with here we go up to about another 1,000 there so that's 2,300 damage give or take probably a little bit more than that um, so we do know that we've got him pretty low and the likelihood that we're actually able to outrun him here and escape from him is pretty slim So instead of just uh, running away like you would usually do in previous patches We just take the fight to him We lead him with that chicken charge deal the 250 damage Then we peck him once and that is enough to put him down into chicken farm now at this point like I realized in the earlier scenario in the first video where I was the one that chickened him first and therefore my chicken charges on cooldown because I used to turn it him into the chicken now it's the flip scenario so he has the chicken charge available so I'm just gonna run away at this point again I've got that five second chicken revive timer I've got a movement speed rune and I've got a chicken health rune so I am pretty safe but just gonna get my way clear of this guy use my revive time to get the advantage I get up before him and uh, ultimately that helps me put in a position where I can then win the fight overall getting him back down into the chicken farm but not getting too close this time and uh finishing him off <laughs> now the last example we have here is a, a scenario where it's better to use the chicken charge to escape rather than to initiate so sometimes being aware that you know now that we do have chicken combat in the game you don't always have to go for the fight we have a pretty intense fight here it's actually in a tournament going on with me and munch versus another duo uh, we take that duo out pretty quickly with some uh, mlg esports plays but now we go around the corner i'm pushing in a little bit too aggressively here and i realize at this point that i've messed up but rather than just go in with the chicken especially since i got concussion bomb back into the air i'm just going to use that chicken charge dash to the nearest window get in through that window and then just chill out here and wait for myself to get back up so i can help out munch who definitely looks like he needs help so there we go, there's some quick examples of the chicken combat and how to use it appropriately. Um, of course, you can have a little bit of fun with it as well. Just go for that game-winning peck sometimes. It can feel very satisfying. Come here! I did it! I killed him with a peck! <laughs> And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to advise about when it comes to the chicken combat and open beta 21. It really plays more into the down but not out mechanic and that you are literally not out and sometimes you can actually come back from the fight and, and win, so. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about, we're gonna go into the rest of the guide and I think before we get into the actual game itself, let's talk about the talent system in Realm Royale. So I have gone over this in the past, um, a link to that in the description down below, maybe it'll be appearing in the top right or top left of the video right now. But there has been a few changes to the talent system. Some talents have become worse and better. So let's go into an updated version of it. Now, I don't want this to go on for too long, so I'm not going to go in super in depth. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments down below. I'll try my best to answer as many as I can. So we're going to go from left to right, warrior, hunter, assassin, mage. Starting off with the warrior, the best talents or the best build that I think you can run on warrior right now is the one that you see on the screen before you. Now, the talents on the left and right are like generic talents, so they're not specific to the warrior. They apply to every class as you can see here they are again and on the assassin here they are again and the same with the mage so I keep the same build generally across these class for these uh, these general abilities starting off with vigor uh, just getting an extra 300 HP I feel like is very very powerful quite often you can win some fights just because you have 300 extra health than the enemy I know a lot of people swear by restoration and if, if you're stuck that way so be it it's okay I'll probably enjoy winning the fight because I have 300 more HP than you but 
I just feel like having that uh, 300 extra HP can make the difference when you've got, you know, some weapons that could potentially three shot you. Sometimes the, the 300 will make it a four shot rather than a three shot, which can make the difference. Next up, we got Bok books in the, uh, the sort of shard slash economy section. Now, I think if you're playing in a tournament, if you're playing in a custom game, I've been running Alchemy lately. And that has actually proven to be very powerful, forging potions 20 seconds faster, so you can just jump into the forge, make potions for 10 seconds, and then jump back out again. It allows you to get back in the action and not stick around in one place for too long. But in like a general game, especially since we have bots in the current state of the game, just dropping down, killing a bot early on, and getting the 25 shards for killing that chicken, plus the 50 shards that they drop by default, that's 75 shards straight off the back, so you only need to find another 15 shards and you can guarantee forge your first weapon, which just turns out to be really, really good. Then we have the chicken talent section. So there is a bunch of good options here. I think chicken run is no longer that great anymore. Um, unbeakable is worth considering, but as you've seen earlier on when I explained in the chicken mechanics section, getting up five seconds faster than your opponent can quite often make the difference. Also, surviving for 15 seconds feels like it's more reasonable than surviving for 20 seconds. Now that we have the double chicken jump and the chicken charge and all the other crazy stuff that you can pull off as a chicken, plus you can get double the effectiveness of unbeakable through the form of the chicken rune in game that gives you a thousand hp i think if you get that chicken rune and you have incubation you're pretty set like quite often you will get back up having five seconds uh, knocked off and also 1000 extra hp so incubation has felt like it's the way to go for me in the latest patch and then finally we have the movement speed slot so over here we have in my opinion only really two options ads means aim down sights which is a question i get asked pretty often but i really don't feel like it does that much you could uh, maybe argue that this is pretty good with the sniper rifle because you can enter into the sniper scope a little bit faster and allows you to quick scope but i feel like it's pretty negligible you don't really notice it that much so it's a toss-up between leg day and master reading they're both pretty good but leg day applies in the middle of a fight you know if you're fighting somebody inside a forge or in a building leg day is still active whereas master reading is only when you're moving around the map so whilst it does it help you get the flank on the enemy and get out of the fog and reposition around i think leg day ends up ultimately being better just because it applies in the time where you need it most and that's when you're fighting another player or trying to run away track down uh, whatever it is just leg day feels like it does eke out above master writing so now going back into the warrior specific talents uh i choose to run inspire just because i feel like the other options are pretty meh having a 400 burst heal like that's that's more than a health potion health potion only restores 300 straight up um even on like a, a common a gray healing shot is really really powerful getting a gray healing shot that effectively just allows you to instantly use a potion plus then give you a heal over time is uh, is really strong and naturally we're going with a forge healing shot with that as well because it wouldn't make sense to have anything else now some of the uh, quite a few of the talents i actually find that running just the default thing is better than the other options that you have so 20 percent more damage uh, i typically like to play the axe with the warrior i haven't played a lot of warrior this patch i will say because his axe got nerfed pretty hard and i haven't been having too much fun with him but i still would run the uh, the throwing axe just because i find it more usable than the hammer and sword got nerfed a little bit too hard it's very hard to make it work in a lot of scenarios especially if you're out in the open so throwing axe is the way to go now you could argue well why don't you take game grover but the thing about game grover is if you're right next to the enemy you don't get any bonus damage it scales upwards so zero percent if you're very close to the enemy 10 percent if they're like a little bit away from you and then to, to be able to get the 20 percent the enemy has to actually be quite far away um, and it feels like a lot of the time when you're using the axe, the axe is designed to be a close quarter combat weapon. A game grover just ends up like not really making sense because you can just get 20% all of the time rather than sometimes getting 20% or more, but it's not very often. And quite often you'll end up with less than 20% when running Game Grover. So I stick to Warriors Arsenal for that. And then finally, we kind of have the no-brainer over here, although I have heard some arguments made for the cooldown over here. But I think Brutality, just starting off with a movement ability that also functions as a damage ability that does 600 damage is just crazy strong. So Brutality. And then I prefer to take Leap over Charge just because Leap allows you to go up and over things you can get into windows you can climb over the top of rocks whereas charge only goes in a straight line and that's pretty limiting even though it does have a shot of cooldown so leap and brutality the way to go there moving on to the hunter and it's worth mentioning a lot of people ask me like Beggins, what do you think is the best class for beginners if we're looking purely from a talent system standpoint um, the build that i currently run with hunter we have explosive tips blast arrow pin cushion forge crossbow and desert shadow with forge withdraw now these four talents here you actually get them very close to the start so this is the stuff that you start with by default and then the first like 10 levels that you get with the hunter you immediately unlock explosive tips forge blast arrow pin cushion and forge crossbow now there's no desert shadow over here and you'd have to wait quite a while to get desert shadow but 
I feel like in the meantime, until you have Desert Shadow, you could just pick up another movement ability from another class. Saw or Leap both work pretty well on Hunter right now. One of the limitations of playing Hunter is that she has no vertical movement ability. She can only go across, like in a straight line, you know, roll across the ground or jump backwards into stealth. So giving yourself the option so you can get up on top of buildings, into windows and stuff like that uh, is actually a pretty good idea. And you might not even like miss out that much, not having Desert Shadow. So good starting class here. Why Pincushion um, when I've been running Recurve a lot in the past? I just feel like lately they nerfed the Frost and Fire elements, but it feels like Frost got nerfed more than Fire. Pincushion just stacks really, really nicely with the Explosive Tips as well. So you've got your Blast Arrow, which not only does about 400 damage, it's now dealing 700 damage because you're increasing the damage by 300 from the Explosive Tips. So 700 damage on a basic ability can be pretty insane. But then you can increase that damage by another 25%, which just ends up hitting the opponent like a truck because... Uh, of pincushion so yeah you hit them once with the crossbow you blast arrow them up into the air before they even touch the ground they turn into a chicken if you land a few more crossbow shots on them it's a really really strong combo and it's very hard to deal with the only limitation of playing this build is that it's not very good from long range but if you find a slug rifle sniper rifle something like that um, suddenly that problem is solved going into the assassin category kind of another good one for a, a starting class you do unlock a lot of stuff from the start um, so the premise of the build again we've got some default stuff here just because I feel like the other talent options aren't worth it we have saboteur to reduce the cooldown of our abilities because I feel like the other options I mean concussed is kind of interesting it did come in the latest patch but I still feel like saboteur is the way to go forge concussion bomb concussion bomb being one of the strongest assassin abilities right now we'll go more into that later then we have a 20% bonus damage, again, for the same reasons as the Warrior. The other options just don't really feel like they're worth it. You could go Toxicology if you're running the Shredder, but I feel like Elim Rifle is the most powerful weapon right now. We've got Forge Elim Rifle, we've got the Forge of the Blink, and then we have the Ephemeral, Ephemeral Protection to give us the shield, the 300 shield. So it, for the same reason the Vigor is good, having that 300 extra shield also ends up being pretty powerful as well. So... This is the build for Assassin, and like I say, pretty good for a starter since you unlock uh, quite a bit of the build straight off the go with the forging of the Alien Rifle and the Blink Shield protection coming in in the first 10 levels. Then finally we have the Mage. The Mage kind of similar to the Assassin in that the car of the build can be unlocked in the first 10 levels again. Uh, you have the Thunderstruck plus the Forge Bolt Staff and you have High Flyer plus Saw. Now Ghost Walk and Ice Block got pretty hefty nerfs in this patch. It used to be that that was one of my favorite builds to run with Mage and very very powerful. You use the Ice Block, the Ghost Walk, the Ice Block. Um, we called it Papega or Exodia but that has been uh, pretty heavily nerfed so I feel like this is the way to go now. You have the Thunderstruck so Bolt Staffs increase the damage a target takes by 30% which is a hefty increase in damage. Now you can run that damage increase with the Forge Solgust if you want and go for the Creeping Gale but I feel like the Healing Station just having an option to heal is always really powerful. There are some situations where a damage ability won't apply if the enemy's too far away you know if you're having like a snipe off from long distance that damage ability isn't going to connect whereas like healing is always good um, you can always use heals when you get low in health so I opt to go for the healing station and then reduce the cooldown just because I don't feel like this 15% damage reduction is noticeable enough and then finally we have high fly being one of the best movement abilities in the game when you have this it's uh, lasts for a really really long time it allows you to reposition around the map get up on top of the mushrooms and fungal jungle and all other kinds of silly stuff um, just kind of a no-brainer to go with high fly right now compared to the other options all right, now we're going to move into the weapons and abilities part of the guide. Now, this is always subject to change. Uh, at the time of recording, it's currently the 14th of August, 2019. So if you're watching this in the future, this guide may be outdated. Some of the weapons may have received buffs on us. But at the current state of the game, this is what I believe are some of the strongest weapons and abilities. Now, the thing about weapons and abilities in Realm Royale is they can vary depending on what class you're playing. So for instance, this longbow here, whilst very, very good on the hunter, if you're running the specific talent recurve to increase the damage by 35%. It's it's not that great when you're playing other classes. It's only 680 damage per shot. If uh, I'll go over and run over to the bots and show you what I mean by that. So in order to get that 680 damage, I have to fully charge back the longbow and then release the area. That's 680, 680, 680, 680. Or I could just pull out the slug rifle. And you can kind of see how the, the faster rate of fire like, we're getting more than 680 out every, like, so we're firing two shots at the same time we could fire one shot of that longbow. And basically what it comes down to is the rate of fire from the slug just ends up being better than the sort of 
what would be, normally be the high damage payoff of the longbow, but when you do run this weapon on a hunter and you fully charge it, it deals more than 900 damage, which is a pretty significant increase in damage. So longbow, one of the weapons uh, that is an example of being good on a certain class, but not good on others. So uh, starting off though, before we get any further down that rabbit hole, let's talk about the weapons that you're most likely gonna find out of a chest when you first drop in. So we have a few of them here, which we can show you handily. Um, revolver and slug rifle. These are the two weapons that I think you wanna be looking for the most when you first drop. Uh, there are some weapons to avoid, I would generally say that shotgun is not worth going for. SMG can be okay. We don't actually have an SMG in this pile of weapons here, but uh, Typically, you want to be looking for, in my opinion, going from best to worst uh, at the starting weapons. Slug rifle, revolver, burst rifle, assault rifle, SMG, and then shotgun. So why do I rate slug rifle so highly is a question that I get asked pretty often. And this is probably going to be a, a variance thing. Like if you're playing on console versus playing on PC, I think the difference would be uh, noticeable. But it's because the weapons, one's called hit scan and the other one's called projectile, which again is another question that gets asked pretty often. So what is the difference between hit scan and projectile? What do I mean by that? Well, revolver is a hit scan weapon. And what that means is if I put the crosshair over the enemy, that's it, like, I don't need to, like, if these guys were moving left to right, they were jumping in the air, I wouldn't have to be leading my shots or anything. All I have to do is put this crosshair over the enemy and pull the trigger. Whereas with the projectile, there's a little bit of travel time. Um, it, because we're so close, it's really hard to see that travel time, but if I can try and get a decent distance away where I can still see them. So this is a more extreme example, but let's say that we want to shoot that, uh, that caravan over there in the background. You can see, you can actually see the bullet traveling through the air and it takes a little bit of time. It's not that much, you know, we're talking like, you know, milliseconds, but there is a little bit of time between the bullet leaving my gun and it actually hitting the caravan over there. So naturally, if that caravan was moving, I would have to uh, lead my cursor a little bit in front of it, my crosshair, uh, to actually be able to catch up with the, the speed and the momentum which it's moving. Where it was with the hit scan, I just put the crosshair over it and it doesn't matter like how fast it's moving, as long as the crosshair is on it, I don't have to worry about uh, you know keeping up with momentum the travel time of the bullet or anything like that so that is the difference so surely you would just say then well Baggins isn't a hit scan just better I don't have to leave my shots or anything all I have to do is just put the crosshair over the enemy it deals damage and you would think yeah that that makes sense that's certainly why it's very very strong a console so why is the slug rifle better than the revolver which is a perfectly valid question and the reason behind that is that if we're fighting from a decent range, which can often happen pretty often in Realm Royale. So let's say from over here, and I'm trying to land a shot on the enemy. We noticed it did 440 earlier on. It's only 369 now. 380, 379, 368. So you can see the further away the target is, the less damage the bullet deals with the revolver. Um, and if we, if it was possible to shoot from even further away, like let's say, you know, over uh, on that island over there, would be dealing barely any damage at all. But with the slug rifle, still 430. From this range, still doing 430. And if we get really, really close, we've still got that 430. So the thing about the slug rifle, and this is the same with most of the projectile weapons, is that regardless of how far away the target is, you'll still deal the same amount of damage. So slug rifle just ends up being a better, more rounded weapon and that you can use it close quarter combat, you can use it from long range, whereas the revolver, whilst very effective, is uh, not that strong from long range due to the damage fall off it has. So that's the difference between projectile and hit scan, and that's why I rate the slug rifle so highly compared to most of the other weapons that you can find, uh, like a non-class specific weapons like the shotgun, assault rifle, burst rifle. They are all considered hit scan, whereas the slug rifle and the plasma launcher are the only projectile weapons. Now the plasma launcher is a bit more niche, but uh, before we get into all of that, let's just give a quick rundown of each class and what I think are the best weapons and abilities for each class. So for some of this stuff, you're probably gonna be able to guess what are the best weapons and abilities in my opinion based on what I talked about the talents earlier. Obviously, I think Axe and Healing Shout and Leap are all the ways to go for Warrior. However, coming up in second and third place, I would say Hammer is an option since Axe has been pretty heftily nerfed in the recent patch with the rate at which it throws now. Um, Hammer is an, is an okay option. 
Part of the reason why I still prefer to use axe over hammer is because hammer is such a chunky weapon. The uh, the actual hitbox, like throwing out the hammer, the projectile often gets stuck on walls, which can cause a lot of problems when you're trying to just peek out, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, we'll get a little bit more into uh, the right side peek and what exactly I'm doing here later on in the video. But And as a result of that, I prefer to go for the axe. It's, uh, it's a little bit skinnier, but at the same time, still packs a punch when it hits the enemy. It just feels uh, like a nicer weapon. I don't know, there's something uncomfortable for me when it comes to using the hammer. I just generally don't have a good time using it. And then finally, we have the sword, as I think currently one of the worst weapons for the warrior. Whilst it still can be very effective up close, if you can trap yourself in a building with an enemy then uh, and they have no way to run, then it's obviously going to be pretty strong there. But if you catch them out in the open, as you can see here, it can be very difficult to actually finish the kill. And a lot of the time, you're going to find yourself struggling to chase down the enemy. Now, you can run a shielding shout on net shot. Net shot, if you run the talent with it and entrapment, it does root the enemy in place and it will allow you to catch back up with them. The problem is if they have a crowd control reduction rune or a CC rune, reduction rune. Crowd control is anything that like slows you, knocks you up into the air, stuns you, anything like that. It reduces the effectiveness of that, so they won't be rooted for anywhere near as long. It'll only be 0.25 of a second, which is barely any time. So I just find the net shot is a little bit too niche. It's generally just, if you have an option to heal, that seems to be the way to go, uh, especially later on in the game and in a more competitive setting, you'll find that you run out of resources pretty often in terms of potions and stuff. So having that heal just feels like it's more viable rather than shielding or rooting the enemy in place. And for reasons that we stated earlier, I prefer leap over charge because it allows you to go over the top of things and get the high ground. Now going into the hunter, uh, there has been a bit of a shift in the hunter's meta and what I think is a uh, best loadout currently. I used to be a big advocate of the proximity mine and the longbow in the past, longbow being a very satisfying weapon, still one of my favorite weapons to use in the game, but as I stated from the build earlier, just the crossbow with the pincushion to increase the damage and then hitting with the blast arrow just seems really, really effective. You do have the option to go for the proximity trap, but recently that was nerfed or fixed. It used to be that at legendary, it will deal 600 damage, which is actually a pretty respectable amount of damage, but now it's only 400. Speaking of the other weapon with the hunter, one of the weapons that I think is the least desirable to go for right now is the arbalest. Whilst the arbalest still is pretty good, the main difference between it and the crossbow is it has a slower rate of fire, but it deals more damage. And it also doesn't have any damage fall off. So you'll see with the crossbow, the further the arrow travels, the less damage it does. It's sort of got that hit scan thing that we were talking about earlier, but the crossbow just melts people up close. Whereas the obelisk, whilst being okay up close and okay from long range, it's kind of a jack of all trades and master of none. You can run the headshot talent with it. And if you're feeling especially spicy, you can land 1000 headshots back to back. But I find headshots to be somewhat inconsistent in Realm Royale. It just feels like the crossbow or the longbow would be a better option to go uh, to sort of home in more on either the long range or the short range combat and then just take a slug rifle to go with it or a revolver something like that rather than trying to fit this weapon that doesn't sort of meet any specific criteria. In terms of the other hunter ability, the flare. Flare used to be really, really popular back in the day when a lot of people were running stealth, but it feels like hidden and withdraw have kind of fallen out of the meta. Um, whilst it will counter the desert shadow, and for those of you who don't know, flare and lightning effects in general, what it does is it reveals enemies. So you can see it actually reveals people through the terrain. So if you have an object between you and the enemy, but they are spotted by the flare or the sensor drone, or you've hit them with the lightning weapon, you'll actually put this red outline around their character so you can see where they are. It's useful, but it still feels like blast arrow. Just why bother spotting your enemy when you can just kill them is has been my mentality when it comes to blast arrow versus flare lately. For those of you wondering, by the way, this was a custom game that we set up. That's why there's so many people just standing out in the open. This was a private lobby that uh, subscribers and viewers over on Twitch helped uh, make a reality for me. Shoutouts to those guys. I'll uh, I'll credit them at the end of the video. Now moving on to the Assassin. Assassin actually has a pretty good array of weapons in the form of the Alien Rifle, which I think is number one, followed by the Sniper Rifle. Asterisk on that with a Reload Rune, Sniper Rifle may be the best Assassin weapon, and then finally the Shredder. It used to be back in the day the Shredder was the best Assassin weapon, and I say that begrudgingly because I don't think the Shredder is a very fun weapon, but certainly on console, very, very powerful. Still is to this day, and it's not as if it's a terrible weapon. Like, when I'm putting these weapons at the bottom and I'm saying Alien Rifle and Sniper are better or 
you know, axe and hammer a better. It doesn't mean these weapons are garbage. You can still use them and do pretty uh, effective stuff with it. In terms of weapons to avoid, we'll talk about that right at the end. Alien Rifle, especially at legendary value, super, super powerful. It's got 10 shots. They deal a decent amount of damage, especially if you've got the 20% damage perk on it. You're looking at almost 500 damage per shot up close. And that's also with the frost element combined as well, which slows down the enemy with each shot, making it easier for you to land your shots and more difficult for the enemy to move away. A big part of Realm Royale's combat and what I think is important is movement, being able to duck, dodge, and dive while your opponent's shooting at you and return shots. A moving target is much more difficult to hit than a stationary target, and that's why I think the Frost Element is really powerful. The Sniper Rifle is a really, really good weapon and very good for opening up a fight. We call it initiating. Um, indeed, in tournaments, you'll see a lot of people running Sniper Rifles, but I think for the standard gameplay, you can't just get away with an Alien Rifle and a Slug Rifle, and you won't be noticing it that much. When it comes to Assassin abilities, I think Concussion Bomb is king. It's a, uh, if you run the Saboteur and you get the legendary version, you can have a five second cooldown on your Concussion Bomb, which is just crazy. Being able to knock somebody out of cover every five seconds and then snipe them or hit them with an alien rifle or just generally put them in a bad spot is really, really good. And while Smoke Bomb and Sensor Drone are good for you, put yourself into stealth and hiding, I just think that the Concussion Bomb does a better job in terms of what you would want in a fight. In the Assassin Movement Ability category, we have Blink and Hidden. Hidden is okay when combined with the Sniper Rifle. You can actually uh, go into stealth, aim down the sights, and then snipe them. And there is some pretty uh, meme builds you can run with the Hidden plus Infiltrator combo. You can actually get like 15 to 16 seconds of stealth or something, which is actually a really long time in terms of gameplay. But the main problem with Hidden versus Blink is that Blink allows you to get on top of the high ground. It allows you to get above the enemy or at least on the same level of the enemy. And then once you're up there, on the high ground with the enemy, you can use the concussion bomb to bounce them off and effectively take the high ground away from the enemy, which we'll talk about later on, but high ground is really, really important in Realm Royale, and uh, hidden just doesn't allow you to do that. You just turn invisible, but you're still, you know, not able to go any further up with hidden. Now, finally, we have the mage, and the mage has received quite a lot of nerfs recently to the point where I feel like the only real option is bolt staff. You can run stone staff, and indeed it is. It does a decent amount of damage if you land all three shots with the strength of stone, or just land all three shots in general. The, uh, the stone staff can be pretty effective. But I think Ball Staff is the way to go. Having that 30% increase on damage just synergizes really, really well with if you want to run the Soul Gust, uh, hitting them for what would be with the legendary Soul Gust 700 damage, adding another 30% on top of that. That's 910 damage, which is insane. That's quite frankly a crazy amount of damage. Or you can run the Healing Station to go with it. Um, and Healing Station synergizes really, really well with Ball Staff because the way Ball Staff works is you just kind of hold down the fire button and go doo, 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 and eventually they'll be dead and you can what you can do is put down the healing station stand in the healing station keeping yourself alive and just hold down your uh, fire button and kill the enemy so you're healing up they're taking damage all the time the damage is increased by 30 percent after the first shot just it's a it's frankly feels like it's a no-brainer to run that um when it comes to the other ability ice block ice block Ice Staff and Ghost Walk used to be the build to go to back in the day, but they nerfed Ice Block and Ghost Walk pretty significantly, which also in turn nerfs uh, Ice Staff because I feel like Ice Staff doesn't really synergize with the other two abilities right now. If you're using Ice Staff, you want to be up close to the enemy and Solgus knocks them away, so that doesn't make any sense. Um, it's kind of like an all-in weapon and that you want to deal damage in a fast amount of time, and that doesn't really synergize with the Healing Station because the Healing Station is better for longer, more drawn-out fights. So Ice Staff doesn't get you used, Ghost Walk doesn't get used, so therefore you have Saw to go to. Saw is a really great movement ability, it allows you to get that high ground again that we've been talking about earlier. So yeah, that's the mage in a nutshell, not really many options to go for. Now at this point in the guide, in the video, I was going to go over positioning in terms of like high ground, right side peak, uh, what weapons to avoid, where to rotate to on the map, where to land. But I've been editing this as we're going through it and I've realized we're over 30 minutes in length and I wanted to keep this like a relatively short video. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a part two for this video. If you guys would like part two to come out sooner uh, for me to work on it faster, let's uh, let's set a goal. Let's try and get a thousand likes on this video. So if you did enjoy what you see or you would like part two to come out sooner, uh, consider clicking that like button. To not leave you guys completely high and dry, I think the two weapons that you probably avoid right now are uh, Gatekeeper and Shotgun. Like I say, I'm not going to get too much into it now. Um, in terms of where to drop, I think you get the most action at Lumberfall and Crossing, but I have really been enjoying Lost Forge lately, as you may have seen from my most recent video. It's uh, it's not actually clickbait. It is actually a really good spot to drop. But yeah, that's been my updated guide for Bone Royale Open Beta 21. 
like I say, um, at the time of like finishing the recording for the video, the link is no longer working in the description. Maybe by the time it goes live, it will be working again. Uh, but if you see a link there, consider checking it out. If there isn't a link there, it's not working at the time being. Um, if you do want to watch my old videos, my old guides, where there are a lot of the stuff like in terms of positioning, and where to rotate, a lot of that stuff is the same. If you want to check out those, I'll put a link to them in the description down below and also put them at the end of the video as well. But yeah, guys, if you like the content, you want more from the channel, make sure you go ahead and click subscribe. Like I said, again, a thousand likes, we'll have part two coming out. Um, but yeah, it's been fun, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you all in the next video.